We'll have some giveaways. FS1 Super Bowl week live from Miami just a week away. All right, we'll get to Aaron Rodgers in a minute, but first, Chiefs and Titans. Patrick Mahomes scrambles, makes two guys miss. Ty ropes the sideline, makes two How more guys miss. How they not get him down there? Because they're and going so for the ball. That's the new trend from NFL defenses. They try to go for the takeaway instead of the knockout. The problem here is that there's only 11 Seems seconds left in right. the half. Right. And I know they had two timeouts, but you get him down there, and the Chiefs maybe end up kicking a field goal. Yep. Such Thankfully, a Thankfully, you don't get him down, play. and I got a push on the Chiefs minus four in the first half. That's what I was That worried. was a close one, Danny. <laughs> Oh. More from this oh. one, Honey Badger, with a bone-crushing hit on court. Get out. You know what I love more about the actual hit itself is that Tyron Matthews said he actually saw this play that the Patriots had run against this defense and had some success, so he said he knew they would see it again, so he, he read it perfectly. Titans, though, on this drive, ended up scoring a touchdown. That was when the back, big, bad pass interference happened. Yep. It was third and 22. How yep. do you do that? Come on. Well, basketball, Heat and Spurs. Derek Jones Jr. skies Ooh. above two Spurs defenders to put down a big slam. God. The second place uh, in the Eastern Conference, Miami Heat, yes. I must add. That's Watch true. out, Bucks. The, the, <laughs> the Spurs end up getting the win. The, the, the Heat have some all time athletes on their squad. He might be the best leaper in the NBA. Is that my guy, Pirtle, that just gets embarrassed there? Oh, oh, oh no, Pirtle. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, I want to give full credit to the Niners. This is about their dominance. And it was a carbon copy of week 12 where there's a critical fumble that takes points off and leads points for the opposition where the end of the first half could not possibly have gone worse for the Packers than it ended up in week one. In week 12, it well, looked like you're going to go into the half down 20 to nothing. They tack on a field goal. This one, it looked like you're going to go into the half down 20 to nothing. They tack on a touchdown. And I feel like such an idiot. My, my lifelong commitment to take integrity has never cost me more than it did in analyzing this game. Because before the year, Danny, I said Super Bowl, Chiefs, Packers. Yep. And the last thing I want to do is a conference championship weekend when they're both alive is divert in any way. But we sat right here after the Week 12 game. And I said what I believed and what I saw at the time, which was the Packers' only path to the Super Bowl is someone else beating San Francisco, if Seattle gets them and beats them, if San Francisco trips up early because they can't block San Francisco and they can't deal with San Francisco's blockers. The defensive line for San Francisco dominated in both matchups. The offensive line for San Francisco dominated in both matchups. And so that's what happened yesterday. It was a, now Green Bay and Rodgers, a lot of those numbers are hollow and he's going to hate rewatching his performance in this. But the Niners annihilated the Packers, and they could have done it with quite literally anyone playing quarterback. It was all about their big people in the run game and their pregame plan. Credit to Kyle Shanahan, one of the best offensive minds in the world, and credit to that Niners defensive front that John Lynch has been first round pick, a first round pick on to do what they did. I think it's even a cop out to say it's a combination of 49ers domination with a lackluster performance from the Packers because I don't think it I think it was just sheer domination. When you're able to control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, which was glaringly obvious in that game, as you had Aaron Rodgers, who was absolutely spooked in the first half. He was thrown off his game. He was jittery in the pocket. He couldn't wait to get rid of the football. Combine that with the dominance on the run game when they're able to you know, establish the run where Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't even have to hardly attempt to pass in the second half. That is a, a complete annihilation on both sides. That was all about the 49ers dominance. Did anyone think that, that this team would be Super Bowl bound? at the start of the season? Danny, did you? Because I, I know you were not fully bought in. What about you, Danny? No, I mean, I, I was looking up their odds before, and they were around 30 to 1, which was about the same as the Falcons, same as the Vikings. So some people believed them. I personally didn't. I didn't think Jimmy Garoppolo... With with a limited window, like I'm always a believer in I need to see more. I need to see a bigger body of work before I believe that a quarterback can take a team to a Super Bowl. I've just seen too many one hit wonders where they go on streaks for six or eight games and then they get exposed. I've been pleasantly surprised with Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, he wasn't now, needed yesterday much wasn't in this really game. About exactly. Jimmy Garoppolo at but it mean, still takes something to get your team to the number one seed to have all the success they did. It's a credit to both, though, because uh, Kyle Shanahan has developed 
this run, which is very similar. I played for Mike Shanahan in Denver. You can see the blueprint very clearly. It's the commitment to the run. It's And again, look at the, the backs that they've gone through this year. Castaways, which was very similar to the Denver, Denver Broncos. Orlando Gary, Mike yes. Anderson, or even in Cleveland when they brought the system there. Yep. When Kyle Shanahan's there, Peyton Hillis. You know, they, they, I don't want to say anyone can run in this system with the right offensive linemen, but it seems like anyone that's good enough to make the NFL yep. can look like a star in this system if you have the right offensive lineman with this play call. And that's that's the tribute that's there. And that's the, the, the consistent commitment to the run is very clearly there. And Mostert had such an incredible game. Yeah, not He's taking an away anything story. from what Mostert right. did still. Absolutely. Mostert is such an incredible story if you're looking and it's it's – you know, he was a practice squad guy in 2015, spent time on five different rosters before finally getting an opportunity on the 49ers practice squad, almost gets cut. He talked about, hey, Coach Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan believed in me and how that belief was so important, how it all culminated in last night's sort of breakout performance on the big stage. It's an unbelievable story. Jenna, to answer your question, I am shocked by the Niners as far as what I thought about them going into the year. Not shocked by them what I thought of them going into the playoffs, even though I picked the Packers to win a close game yesterday, foolishly. I I thought this was a seven or eight win team. I, I, I did not see the leap coming that Vegas saw when they said they were, you mentioned that they were in that kind of third tier of Super Bowl contenders mm -hmm. where they had their projected win total at nine. I, I said, what? Where are the wins coming from? I know that Jimmy G got hurt last year and it derailed their season, but I thought the Mullins kid came in and played well. And I, like you, don't, or at least I, I don't think Jimmy G's great. So I just didn't see this massive leap coming. What I did not factor was the impact Nicky Bosa would have, that the, the, all those young first-round pick defensive linemen, a year better, a year older. Robert Sala, the defensive coordinator, seems to be doing a masterful job. The, the way they use use check and the way they have a fullback-centric offense. When you've got the best fullback in the league, the best tight end, blocking tight end in the league, and the second-best pass-catching tight end, that, that type of offensive line with McGlinchey and Staley and that zone blocking scheme, they can just mow over people. So I now, with the benefit of hindsight, can say, oh, well, that's why they were thought of so much more highly in the preseason than I thought of them. But I'm shocked. I, the, as right as I've been all year long about the Chiefs, I've been that wrong about the Niners. I was one of the people Richard Sherman was talking about yeah. that always was waiting. Well, what about when the schedule gets tougher? Well, what if they have played Seattle again? Well, what, man, they have, they are, and when you watch them, Danny, they're terrifying. That, that, that ability for them to get pressure with four, that is the solve for a great offense. Yep. Is if you do not have to send extra people and you can still be harassing the quarterback the way they did, that's got to already be. They're starting this morning, Andy Reid's got to be thinking, how are we going to keep Patrick upright and how are we going to deal with those behemoths they have on the defensive front? It's unfair to be able to get that much pressure with four guys. It allows you to do so many different things, disguising blitzes, mixing up coverages, and it makes a quarterback's life miserable.